Hello and welcome to Vision Academy. My name is Hanmant Ladwa and in this video we are going to write a program to check whether a given matrix is scalar or not. Let us understand what do you mean by scalar matrix. So it is a square matrix and whose diagonal elements are same. For example, if I write two rows and two column matrix, then the principal diagonal elements must be same and the rest of the elements must be set to zero. So such matrix is called a scalar matrix. So let us write the preprocessor directives hash include in angular brace we'll write io stream dot h header file hash include in angular brace console input output dot h header file. Now I'm going to write wide main function curly open brace and here in the declaration section I am going to declare a two dimensional variable uh, that is array of type integer a of 5 and 5. So here the first subscript represent a row and the second subscript represent column. Next I am going to write row and then column and the indices i and j and I will take a variable called scalar and one more variable called scalar element and put semicolon now we'll write clr scr function which is used to clear the screen now we will ask the user to enter the order so in a double quotation mark i'm going to write enter the order so end the double quotation mark and put semicolon and we are going to receive the response from the user through keyboard using c in stream extraction operator and here i'm going to take a row and stream extraction operator column and put semicolon now we will ask the user to enter the elements of the matrix using c out stream insertion operator in a double quotation mark enter the elements of the matrix so in the double quotation mark before that write uh, backward slash n uh, end the double quotation mark because it brings the cursor down to the next line next I'll use the iterative statement for and here both of these two subscript variable we are going to use here. So i is equal to 0, i is less than, we'll take row and put semicolon i plus plus. The next iterative statement for j is equal to 0, j is less than column and then j plus plus. And now we are going to receive the response from the user through keyboard using c in stream extraction operator and here I'm going to use this two dimensional array. So that is a of i and j and put semicolon. So after receiving the elements, we have to check whether the number of rows are equal to number of columns or not. So r is equal to c. If this is true, then it is a square matrix. So curly open brace. And now I'm going to write c out stream insertion operator in a double quotation mark. I'm going to write it is a square and end the double quotation mark and put semicolon and now i'm going to uh, set this variable value as one so scalar is equal to one so that represent it is a true right next i'm going to take scalar element i'll write scalar element is equal to a of zero zero so that is the first uh, element that is first row first column element is assigned to scalar element next here i'm going to use the same iterative statement once again for i is equal to zero i is less than row and i plus plus next iterative statement for j is equal to zero j is less than column and then j plus plus and here we are going to check the condition if i is equal to j so what is the meaning of this here the principal diagonal elements will be uh, identified so curly open brace and then i'm going to check out one more condition if a of i j is not equal to scalar element so if it is some other element then it should set the scalar value as zero so here i'm going to write curly open brace scalar value must be set to zero and immediately it has to come out of this looping structure 
so curly closing brace for this if statement and one more curly closing brace for this outer if statement next we are going to check out else if if this is false then the other elements has to be uh, zero correct so here i'm going to write else if and a of i j if it is not equal to zero in that situation also it is not a scalar matrix so curly open brace and here i'm going to write scalar is equal to zero and semicolon then break statement and put semicolon curly closing brace for this else if part then after this i'm going to use one more condition called if i'll write scalar if this is true if this is one then c out stream insertion operator in a double quotation mark i'm going to write scalar so this particular uh, uh what you called uh, word it is going to combine with it is a square and scalar right yes here i'm going to write end the double quotation mark and put semicolon if it is not true then else part c out stream insertion operator in a double quotation mark i'm going to write not scalar so end the double quotation mark and put semicolon so here we have used one more if statement over here if the number of rows are not equal to number of columns then else part has to execute so here i'm going to write else c out it should print it is a rectangular matrix so rectangular matrix means the number of rows are not equal to number of columns okay so end the double quotation mark and put semicolon and here i'm going to write get ch function and then curly closing brace now let us take an example so once we compile and run this program it will ask the user to enter the order so here i'm going to write output so i'm going to write here enter the order for example i'm going to enter 2 and 2 so 2 will be stored in row the next two will be stored in c that is column next enter elements of the matrix using these two iterative statement i'm going to enter the same elements for example i'm going to enter 2 0 0 2 for example right so it is going to map in a memory something like this so consecutive two rows and two columns whose index number 0 1 0 1 and this is array a now if r is equal to c so here you can see r is equal to c because 2 is equal to 2 hence condition is true once the condition is true control enters into the body of if statement and it is going to print it is a square and it is going to print it is a square and will be printed as it is next scalar is set to 1 next scalar element is equal to a of 0 0 here you can see a of 0 0 consisting of what 2 right next for i is equal to 0 i is less than row i plus plus for j is equal to 0 j is less than column and j plus plus and now we are going to check out if i is equal to j for the first time i is 0 j is 0 0 is equal to 0 condition is true next we are going to check out this condition a of 0 0 not equal to scalar element here scalar element is what 2 correct so let me write scalar element scalar element is equal to a of 0 0 is what 2 and next we are going to check out the condition a of 0 0 not equal to scalar element it is equal right so hence it is false if this is false then the control comes out of this if statement okay and then again control transfers back to for loop this inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1 now j is 1 i was 0 now we are going to check out this condition 0 is equal to 1 no condition is false once this condition is false then directly control jumps to else if part so it is going to check out a of 0 1 so that is a of 0 1 consisting of not equal to 0 but here it is equal to 0 hence this condition is false once this condition is false then obviously these two statements will not get executed again control transfers back to inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1 now j value is 2 c is c value is also 
2. So here 2 is less than 2? No. Condition fails. Once the condition fails, then the control transfers to outer for loop by incrementing the value of i by 1. Now i is 1, j will be 0. So i is 1 and j will be 0, which is not equal. Hence this condition is false. Then the control directly jumps to else if part. So here we are going to check out a of 1, 0. a of 1, 0 consisting of what? 0. Is it not equal to 0? No, it is equal to 0. Hence it is false. Once it is false, then these two statements will not get executed. So then control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1. Now j value will become 1. Earlier i was 1, now j is 1. So both the values of i and j is 1. So here i is 1, j is 1. So it is true. Next we are going to check out this condition a of 1 1. Here you can see a of 1 1 consisting of what? 2 which is not equal to scalar element. No, it is false. Once it is false, then these two statements will not get executed. So it is going to again transfers the control to this inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1. Now j will become 2. 2 is less than 2. No, condition fails. Once the condition fails, then the control transfers to outer for loop by incrementing the value of i by 1. Now i value will become 2. 2 is less than 2 because r is 2 here. Correct. So hence it is false. Once the outer for loop is also false, then directly control transfers to the next statement. So it is going to check out if scalar. So earlier what we have initialized here, scalar is equal to 1. 1 represent it is true. Once it is true, it is going to print scalar with this particular statement. Here it is a square and scalar will be printed. Yes. Okay, fine. So next we'll take the second run. So this is run one. We'll execute this particular program one more time. So what is going to happen? Once again, it is going to ask the user to enter the order. So I'm going to enter two and two. So here row is equal to two and column is equal to two. And now after inserting the order, it is going to ask the user to enter the order of, sorry, elements of the matrix. So what I'm going to do using this scene statement, I'm going to insert the elements. For example, I'm going to insert 2, 0, then I'll write here 2, 2. Okay. So it will be mapped in a memory, something like this in a consecutive order. So whose index number 0, 1 and 0, 1. So this is the matrix called A. Next, we are going to check out r is equal to c yes 2 is equal to 2 condition is true then it is going to print it is a square and it is going to print it is a square and as it is next scalar variable is set to 1 so scalar element is equal to a of 0 0 a of 0 0 consisting of what i'll write scalar element is equal to a of 0 0 consisting of value 2 next for i is equal to 0 i is less than rho i plus plus j is equal to 0 j is less than column and j plus plus and now we are going to check out if i is equal to j here for the first time i is 0 j is 0 so it is equal hence it is true next we are going to check out if a of i j not equal to scalar element scalar element is what 2 so a of 0 0 consisting of 2 it is false once it is false these two statements will not get executed correct yes so again control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1 now uh, uh, j value is 1 i value was 0 correct next 0 is equal to 1 no condition fails once this condition fails then else if part will get executed so it is going to check out a of 0 1 so that is a of 0 1 consisting of not equal to 0 no, it is 0. Hence, it is false. Then these two statements will not get executed. Again, control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1. Now, j value is 2. 2 is less than 2. No, condition fails. In that situation, the control transfers to outer for loop by incrementing the value of i by 1. Now, i value is 1. j value is 0. Okay. Next, i is 1 and j is 0. So, hence, it is false. Directly control transfers to else if and it is going to check out a of 1 0 here you can see a of 1 0 consisting of what not equal to 0 yes it is true in this situation here you can see it is 2 it is not equal to 0 2 is not equal to 0 hence it is true once this is true then the control enters into the body of this else if and it is going to set 
scalar variable to value 0 and then it is going to break out the forcibly the control is going to come out of this iterative statement here scalar is set to 0 in if condition if the scalar is 0 then it is false then this particular statement will not get executed so control directly transfers to else part then it is going to print not scalar it is a square and not scalar will be printed yes okay so let us go for run 3 so once again we are going to compile and run this program so once again it is going to ask the user to enter the order okay so for example i am going to enter order so for, for example i'll write enter the order now i'm going to enter 2 and 3 so here r is equated with value 2 and c is equated with value 3 next we'll check out this condition right so after receiving the elements so for example 2 3 is a 6 so 6 elements that we need to enter so that is 2 rows and 3 columns for example i'm going to enter 1 2 3 4 5 6 for example okay otherwise uh, we can go for some other numbers as well right so of course we will not be able to find here principal diagonal if it is a square matrix then only we will be able to identify the principal diagonal here you can see we have got two rows and three columns here this condition is false row is not equal to column row is two and column is three hence it is not equal if this condition is false then directly control jumps to the else part it is going to print it is a rectangular matrix so it is going to print it is a rectangular matrix so let us execute this program for that i will take you to my laptop screen here you can see I have already written this program in Turbo C++ compiler. Let us compile this program by pressing Alt F9. Here you can see it is showing success that indicates there is no syntax error. Now I am going to press enter. Now let us run this program by pressing Ctrl F9. Here it is asking the user to enter the order. For example, I am going to enter two rows and two columns. Now it is asking the user to enter the elements of the matrix. For example, I am going to enter 2, 0 then i'm going to enter here 0 and 2 so diagonal principal elements are same and the other elements are zero hence it is a scalar now i'm going to press enter here you can see it is a square and scalar let us run this program one more time by pressing ctrl f9 now it is asking the user to enter the order once again i'm going to enter two rows and two columns and now it is asking the user to enter the elements of the matrix for example i'm going to enter two zero then i'm going to enter here two then two and press enter here it is printing it is a square and not scalar why because the second row first column consisting of two instead of zero hence it is not a scalar matrix let us run this program one more time by pressing ctrl f9 once again we have to enter the order this time i'm going to enter two rows and three columns now it is asking the user to enter the elements of the matrix for example i'm going to enter one two three first row and second row consisting of values like four five then six and press enter here it is printing it is a rectangular matrix I hope you understood this program. If so, please write down in the comment box as understood. Thank you.